In this video, I'll show you how I prepare my miniatures for painting. Hello everyone, and welcome to another brushstroke painting guide. So, for this video, I thought it'd be quite interesting to show you the processes that I go through to prepare my models before painting, and maybe talk a little bit about should or shouldn't you paint things as sub-assemblies. But before we start, let's just run through some of the tools we're going to be using to prepare our model. First off, we've got some clippers, which we'll use just to remove the model from its sprue. Then a craft knife for taking off any excess sprue that we might leave behind. Mold line remover for removing any mold lines on the model. Then a small hand drill for drilling and pinning. And then finally, a series of different sized files just to smooth off any excess. Firstly, we need to cut our model pieces away from the sprue. So for that, we just take our clippers and carefully snip around all of the pieces that we're going to need. Once all the pieces are cut from the sprue, we're going to wash them in some warm soapy water. And the reason we do this is to remove any what's called release agent from them. So release agent is the thing that is used in the molding process and stops the model sprues from sticking to the molds themselves. And as the name suggests, it basically stops anything from sticking to the surface. If we were to accidentally leave any on the model, then it would actually stop the paint from sticking to the model. And in worst case scenarios, it would just rub off or not stick at all. So we just take all of our pieces and drop them into the warm soapy water. This is just some water with some washing up liquid. And we just give them a bit of a swirl around. And then what I like to do is take those pieces and just drop them into a second bowl of clean water. This just rinses off any uh, washing up liquid that might be on the models as well. Then it's just a case of fishing them out and putting them on some tissue paper to dry. Now our pieces are washed and dried, we're going to remove any rough edges left from cutting the pieces from the sprue. We're also going to remove any mould lines. Let's start with the rough edges first. So the easiest way to deal with these is cut off the majority with your craft knife and then using your files just sand it down until it's smooth with the surface of the model. Now just repeat this process all the way around the model for all of the pieces wherever it was cut from the sprue. Next we'll move on to mould lines. So what are mould lines? Well when the two halves of a mould are put together they form a join and that join can sometimes let some of the material through. That's where you get a line where the two moulds have met. They're very simple to remove. All you need to do is run either your knife or your mold line remover along that just to smooth them out. Okay, so now we've got all the parts clean and smooth and we're ready to start building the model. And this is the bit where I thought it might be quite useful just to talk a little bit about sub-assemblies. Sub-assemblies are where you put some of the pieces together without making the whole model and then you paint those pieces separately and put the model together at the end. But that just sounds like more work. Why would you ever want to do that? Well, I think there's three things really you should consider as to whether or not you should be doing sub-assembly for your models. Firstly, the reason for painting. Second, would it be difficult to paint? And thirdly, can it be assembled again once it's been painted? So, let's take the first one. Reason for painting. You could be painting a horde army with hundreds of troops where all you want to do is get them painted so you can start to game. That's absolutely fine, in which case it's probably best you build those models entirely and paint them as single things. Maybe you're painting for a competition or you're painting a particular model and you want to put in more detail and more effort. In that case, you might find that sub-assembly allows you to add more detail and be more precise with your paint job. Or perhaps you're just wanting to test out a particular colour scheme and don't want to paint the whole model. 
I do this quite a lot and if you see my Facebook and Instagram pages you'll see I'll do a test piece with just an arm or a leg just to see how the colour scheme works. The main reason for that is if it doesn't go well it's far far easier just to strip a single piece and try again. Our next consideration then is difficulty to paint. What do I mean by that? Well, let's suppose the model that you're building is very big and if you built it as a single piece would be very awkward and difficult for you to paint. Perhaps the model is very complex and if you put it together you wouldn't be able to access the details to be able to paint them properly. Or maybe you want to focus on a particular area and it would be far easier for you to paint that single piece and then assemble that later. A good example of this would be a head or a face. You want to put a lot more attention into that so you can paint that separately. And our final consideration can the model be assembled after it's been painted? So by this I mean will it go together nicely without any gaps or joins showing after it's been painted? Ideally you'd want to have sub-assemblies which when put together would either completely hide any joins or the model itself would naturally have a join. For example a horse rider sat on a horse would naturally have a gap between the rider and horse. Which nicely leads us back to the model I'm preparing here. So the reason for painting this is going to be for a new painting tutorial for you folks. So obviously I want the quality to be good, in which case I'm going to consider using some sub-assemblies. The first one obviously is going to be the horse, so we'll make that as one sub-assembly. Then there's the rider. So should I attach the rider to the back of the horse? Um, it looks like I could paint it, but I think I'm going to paint it separately. The arm looks like it doesn't obscure anything in terms of painting the, uh, the rest of his body, so I can attach that, that's not a problem. And this cloak, I think because I can't paint underneath it nicely, I'm going to paint that as a separate piece as well. The helmet on this model looks pretty straightforward as well, so I think we can just attach that. Which just leaves the shield, so obviously I can't paint behind the shield if it's attached, so I'm going to leave that as a separate piece as well. So now we've decided on our sub-assemblies, it's just a case of gluing the pieces together. And for this I just use some super glue, which I prefer to apply using a cocktail stick as I find it gives me more control in terms of how much I apply and where I apply it. Next, we're going to need a way of holding our pieces whilst we paint them. So using a hand drill, I just drill a small hole into the bottom of each of the pieces. Obviously, choose a place to drill a hole which won't be seen when you put the pieces together. Next, take a paper clip and some strong clippers and simply snip it into small pieces. I then take those paperclip pieces and glue them into the top of a wine cork. This then forms my painting handle. Now it's just a case of super gluing our sub-assemblies onto the top of our painting handles. I often get asked how you then get the pieces back off the painting handles when you finish painting them. And the answer is very simple. Because the super glue is actually quite brittle, all you need to do is twist the piece and it will come off very easily. Okay, so we've got our pieces ready on their painting handles now, and there's just one last step we need to do before we can get them primed. And that's to fill in any of those annoying gaps where the pieces just haven't quite fit together properly. So for this, we're going to use the product with the fantastic name of Mr. Dissolved Putty from Mr. Hobby. This stuff is really simple to use, so just get a small amount on the end of an old brush and then just dab that onto the area which you want to fill in. The stuff itself is actually very liquid so just let it run into the crack itself and let it fill it up 
and it'll sort of self level. I'm not being particularly neat, all I want to do is make sure that it runs into each of those cracks. Once you've filled in all your gaps, you're going to need to leave it to dry until it is completely solid. Then, using a fine file, you can sand it down to a smooth finish. It really is that simple, and the results are fantastic. It was even easy to fill in the gap on this horse's neck without obscuring any of the armour detail. The final step then in preparing our models for painting is to prime them. It's important to use a primer before you paint your models, because the primer actually bonds to the model and offers a better surface for your paint to adhere to. I like to start by priming the model with Vallejo Surface Primer in black. I then like to apply a zenithal highlight to the model. All this means is spraying from a 45 degree angle above to simulate the light catching the top of the model. You can use an airbrush, as I have in my case, or a rattle can to get the same effect. For this highlight, I like to use Vallejo Surface Primer in grey. As you can see, applying that highlight of light grey has picked out all the details, and the model is now brighter at the top, but if you turn it upside down, you can see it's still black underneath. I find having this highlight really useful because it gives an idea of where the light and shadow needs to be on the model, and also helps pick out all those small details, which you might not see if it was just a black primer. And that's it, our pieces are now ready to paint. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and it's helped explain how I prepare my models for painting because I really believe that good preparation leads to a good paint job. If you have found this video useful then please do drop a comment below. Don't forget you can follow my work in progress pictures on my Instagram and Facebook channels. But in the meantime, please like this video Subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and don't forget to share. Thank you.